Okay, before we get into the ideas of two-point perspective, we have to do some more top-down analysis and a couple of other conjectures. So first off, let's assume that we have an exact square. That's not an exact square. Let's actually use this. Now there's some really awesome things that we can do with this exact square. For instance, we can know the, by the definition of a square that this is a 90 degree angle, and so is this, and this, and this. And a square is different from a rectangle in that all the same, all the sides are the same way. So let's just say that's eight inches or so. Eight inches, eight inches, eight inches. Now, being that all the sides are the same length, we run into another really exciting thing, which is if we cut these diagonals in half, we end up with new mathematical truths. Number one, all of these are also 90 degrees. All these internal angles. And another thing that you have happen is that what's half of 90? All these are 45 degrees. Down here, and here, and here, and here. And also, we have now found, most important of all, the exact middle of this square. And what that means is that if we cut this exact middle square, we will have found exact halfway points. So now we know that this is 4, 4, 4, and 4. And we can keep doing this infinitely, right? We can say, we can cut this di This is a perfect square now, too, that's 4 by 4. So if we cut this, we now have found a midpoint. And we can cut this, and now we can say this is 2 by 2. And we also are going to continuously create these... 45 degree angles, and uh, we also can create cubes within a cube, or squares within a square. So if I cut, based on this center point that I cut, I can now put a square inside of this, and we know that it's been rotated exactly 45 degrees. Now this matters because uh, we're going to deal with two-point perspective, which has something called diagonal vanishing points. Or, let's call it DVP for short. Now, diagonal vanishing points are very much locked in place in that in the same way that with one point perspective, one point, one point perspective equals principal vanishing point, which equals things that are parallel to us or perpendicular to us, or parallel to our line of sight or perpendicular. Parallel and perpendicular to line of sight. Now, based on the rules of these squares, we can see where we're going with this secondary, uh, with this two-point uh, perspective, which is diagonal vanishing points equal 45-degree angle stuff. Anything that's turned 45 degrees from us is going to use our diagonal vanishing point. Now, let's also just really quick take another examination of our top-down view. Well, let's hit, here's our here's our humble person, and they've got their line of sight going that way. <coughs> if we cut this line of sight, we have that same idea of 90 degree angles, right? Well, in the same way, let's say we drew lines out at exactly 45 degrees. So this is also 90 degrees, but rotated 45 degrees this way. What this means 
is that anything that's parallel to these is also going to converge on a vanishing point. Now, based on these secondary vanishing points, all the lines that are at 45 degrees this way are going to appear to converge way off in the distance over here, and all the lines going this way are going to appear to converge, and as vanishing point would indicate, appear to vanish. That's going to be our descriptor. So based on this, let's put it into practice. First off, I'm going to put our grid on. Actually, I'm going to create a new document that's exactly one by two. <coughs> now, I don't care necessarily about getting these perfectly aligned yet, because that's a more advanced thing, and we'll talk about it pretty soon. But to start with, let's just put in a horizon. Snap to grid. So if this is our horizon, we can assume that right here in the center is our principal vanishing point. And over here, is a diagonal vanishing point. And over here is a diagonal vanishing point. Now really fast, let's just draw a perfect square. And I'm going to add some assistance now. Again, assistance are only as good as your understanding of them. So don't get too excited about them. First off, I'll put one in right here for our principal vanishing point. One right here for this diagonal vanishing point. And right there. Now let's start by drawing a line on the ground. And it can be anywhere, but for our sake. We can put it right there. Right there. Now let's say this was a square that we wanted to make sure is perfect. Well, if it's receding, and given that this line is parallel to that, I can put it, so this line here, because that is parallel to the horizon. We know that it's something that's going to use the principal vanishing point. Now, in the same way that when we were looking at that square from a top-down view, we could see how cutting diagonals made perfect 90-degree angles, or perfect 45-degree angles, we can do that with our secondary vanishing points. So... I'm going to turn my grid off. If I cut this square using a diagonal, I will have now found the exact back point of this. So this is the exact back of the square based on math. And also, If I cut it this way, going all the way back to that principal in, or that diagonal vanishing point, we will have now found the exact center of this. So I can go like that, and I know what I'm looking at. <coughs> I 
Where's my voice? So all of these are going to be exact squares. Uh, you don't have to do this. You could have just say, had two lines extend back towards the principal vanishing point. And you could chop them anywhere. Really? Up there. And we've arbitrarily chopped this. Uh, so we know, based on a rectangle, that we still have some mathematical truth. So given a rectangle, if you cut the diagonals, you're still going to be able to get midpoints, and you're still going to get 90 degree angles. It's just that you're not going to get something where these are exactly 45 degrees. And if you did this, you won't have a square rotated 45 degrees. Instead, you'll have a diamond. But for instance, let's say we wanted to find the exact middle of this. I could still do that. So by cutting this rectangle in half, I now have the exact middle. And also, the exact middle this way. So, for something like, I don't know, making a tank or a car or something, it's just rectangles. So you don't need to find exact squares. But if you can at least find the middle, you'll be able to place something like the wheels and the, the steering wheel and the windshield. You'll be able to place all that better. Now, one last thing that's kind of interesting about this is, in the same way, we were looking at this from the top view, and we saw that here with your top view, here's your shoulders, here's your line of sight, going infinitely until it hits the vanishing point, the principal vanishing point. <coughs> in the same way, imagine that instead of this 45 degrees rotated angles uh, to get your principal or your uh, diagonal vanishing points, Imagine that we're looking at you from this side. So here you are. Here's your line of sight. And in the same way that we can have an angle from the, uh, the top view, we could have a 45 degree angle from the side view. Now why does this matter? Well, you can imagine way off in the distance Imagine we didn't have the curvature of the Earth, and therefore a horizon. A horizon and a principal vanishing point, and just all vanishing points, are completely arbitrary. Uh, what happens if you put a mountain there? Like, then you wouldn't even be able to see the horizon. In the same way, you can imagine a horizon. That went directly up and down. And in the same way that everything from the, t uh, the top view that is parallel to those 45 degree angle curves is going to land on the diagonal vanishing points. You can have the same happen with this side view. So imagine a bunch of lines that are parallel to this 45 degree turn from the side view. And this is important for when you want to do something like make a wall of repeating squares. So a wall is going to go in the opposite direction, up and down. Just to clean some of this up really fast. Let's just clean some of this up. So imagine yourself imagine here's you and you've got some sort of horrific saw head mat and it's got some sort of like two rods going that way a rod going this way 
I'm going to go on like here. And basically, a head mount that represents these 45 degree angles. Uh, one of the things that happens is you can imagine your secondary or your diagonal vanishing points over here as having an equidistant size up here. So I can do, um, I'm going to try and eyeball it. Maybe about there. So imagine I have this false this false horizon going in the opposite direction that we can't actually see, but we can imagine for our purposes. And similar to our line on the ground that became a perfect square, maybe we have a line right here. And it goes towards that vanishing point. Well, we could cut this diagonal now. And once again, I figured out a perfect mathematical square. And if I cut this diagonal more, I now have the midpoint for this. Now you can continuously repeat these. Turn the system on. And these squares are going to appear. Now I'll just start eyeballing them. But they're going to appear to get closer and closer together as they approach that imaginary horizon. Until they appear right on top. And then, like previously, they vanish. In the same way that it happened when we had one down here. So again, we don't really see, we actually don't see this sort of upper horizon very much. But it's important to understand how to, how to imagine its existence so that you can do things that are vertically up and down and repeating, like the side of a building. So next up, Let's actually try and make a scene where we put this idea into practice.